Thank you. I hope you can hear me now. It's ringing a little bit. I hope it's not. Okay. Um, with today's technology, this could be exact copy of my skull. Exact copy. So what you need for that, I mean, that to me sounds like science fiction. It's today's technology. So what you need for that, you need to take a CT scan of your head and then after, out of that you can, you can make an exact 3D model of your head, of the bones in your head and then you can use a 3D printing technique to make the 3D object out of it. So you can get exact replica of your head. So let's talk a little bit about applications uh, on that specific thing which we have worked here in Alta University. So basically in, in, uh, in, in surgery, if you have something missing out of your bone, like you have, uh, uh, like because of cancer, because of accident, uh, you can first scan your head, you can get exact replica of what's left. You also can figure out what's missing there and you can pre-make it out of titanium. And then you can practice your surgery with, uh, with these two pieces. And, and, and then you can do the real surgery. And obviously, the surgery can happen dramatically faster. And the faster the surgery, the better outcome there's going to be. So let's go now back to the basics about 3D printing. Uh, Basically, what's the invention? What was the main, in, in my opinion, the main invention in 3D printing technology in, uh, with, that happened in uh, mid, say, mid 80s? That's when the whole industry started. It started pretty fast as commercial business. The main invention is, is that you make 3D objects out by stacking two dimensional images. So you build one image after another, you just stack them up and you get a three-dimensional object. I mean, it's obvious that the opposite is, is, is true. You can, you can start with three-dimensional objects and you can take a saw and cut them into 2D images. So this is a way to make a very complicated, complicated uh, 3D shapes with a very, very simple process. It's really critical. It's a simple process, so it's a great for automation. So from the very beginning, these devices were all automat automatic. The first company in this uh, business was 3D Systems. They invented a technology called stereolithography. I was working for 3D Systems almost 15 years, from mid-90s to uh, late 2000, uh, or 2006. In this process, uh, you, you, you are making the 2D slices. You, are, you start with the photocurable polymer, so it's liquid. Wherever the laser hit, it becomes solid. So using this laser and this mirror device here, you draw the image of that one layer. That, and then after that, the, the part inside this vat goes down and a new layer of res, res, resin is deposited on top of it and then the process starts. So in the end you end up of having this three-dimensional object inside this liquid photopolymer vat. And yeah. So 3D printing, like I said, was invented in late 80s. Uh, it actually became really fast a commonplace technology for product development. It was actually, many of you might have known the technology as rapid prototyping. It is uh, it's a way to make uh, prototypes uh, of, a, of a commercial products. Automotive industry, aerospace industry, consumer products. These are three, three industries where this was very, very common already from 19, 1990s. Uh, so let's now talk a little bit 
what further, uh, further potential this technology has. So this was a good for prototyping in the beginning. So okay, how about production? And, and why would you do production with this technology? So one thing is here, if you design something like that, then you want to make it manufactured. You actually have to manufacture all these things because there are rules. You need to have certain draft angles so that you can remove the uh, you can remove the mold and you get the part out from there. So in order to make that, you need to make this many parts. And then you need to assemble them. So there's two things. You need to make more of them and then you need to assemble them. In 3D printing, you can do this directly. So I told, I was working for 3D systems since 1990s, uh, 1994. Uh, one big application, one of the first big commercial applications in 3D printing was when Boeing decided to add plenty of electronics in one of their fighter jets. However, when they added electronics, they, they had to uh, add more cooling and there was, no, there was no room to add more cooling with conventional technology. So they went to 3D printing so they could make more compact cooling channels using this technology. Like I said, I was, I was developing this, this is selective laser sintering technology, but also I was specifically working a little bit with Boeing and kind of optimizing this process. Uh, another opportunity in, in, in aerospace industry and possibly other industries is, uh, is uh, basically in 3D printing, co complex objects can be, can be made as easily as simple ones. So complexity comes for free. So, so basically you can make structures where you have the strength on one side and it, it, less strength where you don't need it. So you can optimize and in aerospace the weight uh, is very, very uh, a critical factor. So you only put the weight where you need. You need to put the strength where you need so, and weight can be reduced. This is another reason why you m might want to use 3D printing in, 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 in production. And there is a huge expectations for these things, uh, how, they're gonna, how, how they can affect the future. Okay, another aspect of, of, of uh, these technologies is that uh, with today's technology, if you make a new product, it can, it can be very expensive to provide the molds, make the tooling for the product. So, there is, there is an approach that instead of, instead of making the tooling for all these, all these components, you start with the, with the 3D printing and then eventually when you understand your business better, then you start, uh, then, then you make the tooling. And so there is a fast path to production, not only that. But there is a fast path to market. At the time when you make, need to make your tooling decision, you already have a product. You already know what the business is going to look like. So, one more aspect in, in respect of medical field is that uh, if, if, if there is something which is going to conform uh, shape, a organic shape, a certain person, 3D printing is great because because you can pretty much get any shape. So here is an interesting application where for invisible theta lines. So this person is wearing theta liners like this person. And uh, so how, do, how can you make it that way? These theta liners are actually uh, transparent. Uh, but what is interesting is that these are not deforming at all. So when the teeth move, so actually you, when, in this treatment you have a you have a, uh, about 30 different sets of these transparent aligners. And each of these aligners is a little bit different. Typically they are 50 micrometer different. You move the teeth about 50 micrometer at the time. So now we start with the organic shape of a person. Then you do mathematical manipulation of that person, of that, of that aligner, move the teeth a little bit, and then you print a new one. So this technology is not just replicating. This is a very complex, starts with organic and then mathematical manipulation to get to the final shape. Uh, okay, so title, uh, so 
the title of my talk was the, how 3D printing can change the world. Uh, now we are talking about, uh, about this is not today. This is something which is going to happen next 10, 20 years. Uh, in st today we are printing, we, we are producing products in certain locations, most likely in Far East. And then, then we ship that location to all over the world. And, and shipping the product to different parts of the world takes a couple of months. Uh, but however, because to, in order to make millions of these to, 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 to make it cheaper, to make the tooling cost lower, to make the molding cost lower, you, you, need, to, uh, you need to get your design ready years in advance. So in order to, to be able to effectively, you pretty much need to, if you make, make you need, need to have finished your design about a year in advance before, before, you, uh, before you can sell your product. So obviously, I don't believe this is the future. I believe in the future. You, 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 you will be able to go to the, pro, to the market very, very fast, like I told earlier. So the only way to go to the market very, very fast is that instead of shipping the thing or chain, you, you, you ship things electronically and you print locally. And if you need to make changes, you make the changes whenever needed. The next product, you make changes and you print immediately. My, my vision is that uh, you will be, uh, you, your product development cycle can be days or weeks, not years. Do the similar aspect of this thing is that, okay, instead of, if, if something today in, in a product development, you need to actually build a lot of additional parts for spare parts, because you might, you might even lose, the, you might not use the tooling anymore later. So, so you, 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 then you store these spare parts somewhere in the world and you, you order them. So what, what do I see in the future? Again, this is 10 to 20 years away. I see in the future that if something breaks, uh, you, you, elect, you, are, you are electronically delivering the data for your spare part and you print wherever you need it. Okay, uh, so these are the kind of aspects which, which, where, where I really believe that 3D printing is going to have a huge impact in the future. Uh, we are working on some new aspects. One aspect on, on 3D printing is that we, we are actually, the commercial 3D printers, they are typically for human uh, scale. P parts which are this size or speaker, that, that kind of, but it's something which you can see. We are working where we are going down to few microns. And this is probably about two orders of magnitude smaller than the commercial technology are capable today. We believe there are huge markets in that. And what is really critical is that we, we are planning to do this very inexpensively. So they can be, they, they can be, uh, uh, they, they can have a huge co consumer uptake. Another aspect of this thing is printing living cells instead of, uh, instead of just plastic or, or metal, whatever. Uh, we are printing living cells, this is called tissue engineering. Uh, and, and in tissue engineering, uh, certainly short term what we are thinking, we are printing certain arrangements of living cells. Out of that we can do all kind of testing. We can probably develop personalized medicine because those living cells might have been derived from your own stem cells. Uh, eventually, long term, now we are talking probably about 20, 30 years, we might be able to print some organs. Another really interesting, really interesting aspect of my research at the moment is, 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 is we have founded a here in Alta University, Alta Digital Design Laboratory, where, where the benefits of digital design are, are used together with the, with the 3D printing and, and production of these digital designs. So AdLab, uh, here are some art related to digital design uh, in the AdLab facility. So let me talk a few words about, about what I'm planning to teach. I already mentioned about 3D printing and product development, like I said, that is something which is already commercially uh, available. 
uh, and, and I think it's very important for us to have a strong presence there. 3D printing in production, I believe that it's, it's a minute in the world scale right now, but I believe it has a huge impact in the future. Uh, certainly there is hands-on training. Another interesting aspect which I kind of mentioned is that the, the business is going to change because 3D systems, how, 3D, 3D printing technology. How do we, uh, what kind of businesses are going to be supported by this new approach? And, and certainly uh, in, the, in the Alta University we have started with, 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 the, with the development of this Alta Ventures program which kind of looks for uh, scalable growth businesses and we, we, we don't know if we can learn something out of that and get to work together with 3D printing in those. I already mentioned about this new research and teaching environment, Ad Lab, we certainly feel very uh, or we are planning to uh, use that very heavily. Uh, with, the, with the microsteroidography, it, it goes a little bit with laser material processing, laser ma micro machining. Okay, so let me kind of get to the end. Uh, I certainly want to acknowledge my, my employee for more than 10 years. Uh, here in Alta University, I have been privileged to have a lot of great collaboration with many, many teams. I, I think this is not even the full set of teams which I have. Uh, I do work in the, in the medicine, I do work with Helsinki University's pharmacy department, uh, printing living cells. Okay, thank you.